So I don't know um, whether I'm going to post this one to um, to YouTube, but if I do, it won't be until after the conference. And so uh, I don't know, but just in case, uh, if you are welcome, or if you are watching on YouTube, welcome to the Data Science Learning Community Project Club. Uh, technically, this is the first meeting of the Data Science Learning uh, community project club because last month it was still called the R4DS online learning community and I will be talking about uh, why we changed and what that means uh, today and then um, I know also Federica is here and she um, so I guess to back up a little we're, we're basically practicing or talking about our talks that we're going to give uh, this coming week at Shining Count um, and so Federica has a uh, lightning talk that she's going to give about the shiny book clubs at uh, the DSLC. Um, Trevin also has uh, a shiny comp presentation. I didn't talk to him about this at all, but if he wants to do any rehearsing, uh, he is welcome to do that if we have time as well. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's that's what we're going to do today. I do did want to talk right up front here that we don't have anyone signed up for May. So if you have a project that you want to talk about, uh, signups are open. Um, the whole idea is that we don't uh, really police it. Like as long as you have something that is data science related or R programming or Python programming or Julia programming uh, that you want to talk about, uh, sign up and it's a just a way to practice and to get some friendly feedback. All right. And so today what we are going to do is um, I'm going to start because I think I am earlier in the day uh, than anyone else. And so we'll kind of have the order a little bit similar to what we're going to do um, on Thursday. Um, so yeah, the conference is uh, the shiny comp. It's all online. It's relatively cheap. Um, you can go to shinyconf.com to learn about it. And um, it's uh, two stages this year. Um, Wednesday is workshops, and then Thursday and Friday are talks. And I am chairing the Shiny for Good track, which is stage two on Thursday. And um, I'll be giving a talk. Federica is going to give a, uh, a lightning talk. There are uh, a number of lightning talks mixed into, I don't remember right now, four or five longer talks plus a keynote. Um, and so hopefully everyone can be there, but if not, uh, you're going to get a, or in any case, you're going to get a little bit of a preview today. Um, this talk likely is not finished and we'll see what, uh, what we come up with today of whether anything is confusing or whether it takes uh, considerably longer or shorter than my uh, planned 20 minutes. I've gone through it a couple times, but it's not perfect yet for sure. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing what people say. And so I'll start and then hand it over to Federica and uh, you know anyone else uh, who has talks for this week. All right, so let's get started. I am, uh, actually, I'm going to click the timer button to reset. All right. Uh, my name is John Harmon. Um, many of you here know me, uh, but you can find me online at John the Geek on most social media. Uh, I have a link there to my Fostodon account for Mastodon, but there, you know, you can find me other places as well. You can find us at dslc.io. And today I'm going to be talking to you. I'm going to uh, reintroduce the data science learning community. So um, we, uh, until uh, two weeks ago, we were known as the R4DS online learning community. And so I'm going to start talking about, um, you know, where we came from and why we have renamed ourselves. So we started as the R4DS online learning community, and it all began with a tweet from our founder, Jesse Mostapak. Uh, she tweeted out uh, back in 2017, my RStats learning path. Step one, install R. Step two, install R Studio. Step three, Google, how do I thing I want to do in R? And then repeat step three, add infinitum. Um, you know, it was a, a 
funny tweet about her her journey. And Hadley Wickham thought it was funny, and he retweeted it, along with 733 other people retweeting it, retweeting it after he did, um, which led to her having like this minor celebrity status for a little while on our stats Twitter. Uh, <clears throat> and so she used that uh, to launch a book club. She's like, okay, I've always wanted to read R for Data Science, but I've never actually made my way through it. And so she just said on Twitter, with all this attention, Hey, does anyone want to join me? I'll set up a Slack and you know, I'll read R for Data Science together. Um, and so she, you know, she created this book club, and um, about two hundred people joined that book club, and uh, right away. And then another two hundred people within the first month. Um, so it, it just it rapidly grew. There was a little bit of a fall off, and then she launched a second cohort. It grew even more. Um, and you can see that the weekly stats stayed relatively high, a couple hundred people participating in this book club um, every week. And, you know, that's how things uh, stood for a little while. And part of how she kept people coming back was uh, she kept it friendly. Like she aggressively instituted uh, measures to keep the the community friendly. She had a code of conduct that was all about uh, friendliness and inclus inclusivity. Um, she would post on the Slack, hey, we're all here to learn, kind of trying to keep it uh, the like anti stack overflow that you're not going to tell people, oh, no, you can't ask that kind of question. It was all um, just supporting the idea that everyone there was there to learn together. Um, I took over from her in uh, the second year. So kind of uh, around you know, that point or so. Um, and I just made it my mission that every time anyone joined the Slack I uh, and posted in our introduction channel, I, I would greet them. I would put a reply onto their greeting saying, you know, welcome, we're glad to have you. Uh, here are some things you might want to check out based on what you said. And just to make sure that it felt like a friendly place to be. Um, thanks to that, you know, we've had a code of conduct the entire time we've existed. And with only a couple exceptions, all the enforcement that we've had to do uh, as far as like community um, monitoring has been around like teaching tips basically. So uh, letting people know, hey, that response was a little bit harsher than you might've intended or just little things like uh, don't use just. So I just actually did that and <laughs> say that uh, accidentally, but when you're telling someone how to do something, don't say, oh, you just have to blah, blah, blah. Um, because that just, that makes people feel like, oh, I should have known that. And that's not what we're going for. That's the kind of enforcement I've had to do, which is not, you know, it's barely enforcement compared to a lot of online communities. Um, Jesse gave a talk at our studio comp in 2019 about the community and um, her self-taught data science and uh, d diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Uh, that is well worth watching to see kind of the back more of this background of how she set this thing up and what she wishes she would have done differently. Um, but that talk did lead to um, a little bit of a bump in membership. So you can see that there were a couple of spikes right around uh, our studio comp there in 2019. Sorry, you can see that there. Um, I'm actually not sure what the spike over here is, but uh, Somewhere in there was also I gave a talk at USAR um, that following summer summer virtually, and that also led to a little bit of a, a growth. Um, sorry, that that talk was uh, R4DS, how can we help? That one was funny because, her, I don't know, sad, weird. Um, someone else was supposed to give that talk. His visa fell through and he didn't have solid internet. And so he couldn't couldn't do it. And so I kind of did like slide karaoke at the last minute and uh, gave that talk. I think I ended up actually producing some new slides because of some confusion. But anyway, so we did gave those talks, kept growing a little bit. Um, and then, you know, towards the end of 2019, we were, we were getting to a certain level. Uh, and then I gave a talk at the beginning of 2020. But uh, the real thing is something happened around 2020 Right. So everyone was stuck at home. Um, 
And we decided, hey, we're all just kind of sitting here with not a lot to do. Why don't we read Advanced Art together? Someone brought this up. Uh, Maya Gans actually introduced the idea. And, um, you know, it was funny because like the people who wanted to do this weren't members of that original R4DS book club. Uh, but we were like, yeah, this is a book that's been sitting on my shelf. Let's actually read it. And uh, we it went pretty well. So we started doing more book clubs. And you can see that we started to really grow again. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about these book clubs in the, the next section, how they work. Uh, but they, you know, they definitely started bringing people in. And then, you know, Hadley Wickham again had to make... Uh, an appearance in our stats that he visited the clubs. Uh, he came in and did like a Q and A a couple of times, and that really brought more people in. Uh, when you get uh, him out on social media talking, uh, people noticed and really started coming in. Um, we had a few visits from him, uh, and we got up to where we were, um, you know we got above this, but we, we kind of leveled off at about 500 active participants every week. Um, there is a, a talk that Maya Gans gave about this whole situation, starting in our book club, Cooking Up Friendships in Isolation. She gave that at our studio Global on in 2021, the online conference. Um, and through all this, we grew to about 18,000 members. Now, again, about 500 active a week, but 18,000 overall. Uh, and those members are not here, almost, almost none are here to read R4DS. And so we're called, the, we were called the R4DS online learning community, but we didn't really have anything to do with the book R4DS. Um, we started to have book clubs beyond R4DS uh, or beyond R even for with Python book clubs and Julia book clubs. And so this last uh, beginning of this month, April 4th, we renamed ourselves the Data Science Learning Community. Um, you can find us at dslc.io, and we're much more than just that one book club. Uh, we do still have book clubs, but now we support more than 60 books or book-like uh, things. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And we cover like all aspects of data science, um, modeling, shiny, package creation, and we're multilingual. We have book clubs in R, Python, and Julia. Um, at some point, I'm sure we'll have a, at least one club in SQL. So we, we want to cover all those different uh, areas. The name R4DS just didn't make, us, make sense for us anymore. So we are the data science learning community. And now I want to talk a little bit about, OK, uh, oh, and yes, also literally multilingual that we have had uh, two clubs in Spanish. Uh, we had the translation of R4DS into Spanish, um, R para Ciencia de Datos. And then we, that same group um, read Tidy Modeling with R in English, but discussed it in Spanish. And so, yes, we're literally multilingual. Um, and so our mission is to provide tools and resources to foster a, a uh, diverse, friendly, and inclusive community of data science learners and practitioners. And I want to talk a little bit about you know, what are those things? What, what do we do? What are our tools and resources? So, you know, as I've talked about, um, we have these book clubs. Uh, we started with R for DS, but we now have support over 60 free online uh, data science books and book like things like online courses. Um, we've had a couple clubs even about package down sites of, of certain packages that will read through the whole documentation and really learn a package. Um, and yeah, so R for data science, but we've also had advanced R, tidy modeling with R, uh, mastering shiny engineering production grade uh, shiny apps um actually federica is going to be giving or talking about a couple of those shiny focused ones a little bit later uh we've also had python for data analysis and these are just obviously a handful uh we've had so many more um we set these up with small groups 
to encourage discussion. We aim for, uh, well, we require five members to get it started and really five or six members is ideal. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less, but that's the, the target. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm trying to find out <laughs> why I have a pause point in here. Um, we do one hour weekly meetings um, in which one person leads discussion of a chapter and then we have shared slide decks that we're developing co collaboratively as more and more groups read the same book. And we post all of those videos on YouTube. So it's okay to miss a week. Like someone can just catch up on YouTube or we actually have people who you know, participate in the book clubs entirely via the YouTube videos. And uh, we see those viewers every week. Uh, often they'll comment in the on the YouTube. Um, and I try to push them towards joining the Slack because that's where the real discussion is. Um, we also, uh, ha we do have a Slack channel for every book so that um, we can have asynchronous discussion between the books and different clubs can discuss the book together. And uh, we also post all the meeting chat to those Slack uh, channels so that people can keep up. All right, so the, the next way that we, that we you know, try to foster this community is helping each other with friendly Q&A. So this was um, a big part of kind of the middle of our development is that we developed this supportive community for asking questions. Um, I gave a talk about this at our studio comp 2020, uh, learning by teaching at the R4DS online learning community. And um, the idea there was even if you are more experienced, you know, maybe R4DS and maybe none of these books appeal to you. Uh, the the Q&A section uh, allows you to kind of stretch those skills of, I've learned so much by answering questions on uh, the DSLC Slack. And so I, I you know encourage people to watch that video or just come join us. Um, and so yes, our more experienced members help our newcomers that helps even if you know it, if you started out reading R4DS, you can then start answering some questions on the Slack and that really cements the knowledge. And we have this culture of collaboration where it's okay to not know. Um, it's, it's really expected that people are gonna be asking questions. And so you don't have to feel like you're doing anything strange by asking questions. Um, and then our next kind of major uh, initiative that we have is Tidy Tuesday, um, I, I call this learning out loud. It's our way to kind of um, show what pe what we're doing. This started pretty early in the history of uh, the community. Uh, we call it a weekly data project or a weekly social data project from the data science learning community. And the idea is that every week we po post a new data set and then uh, participants share their data visualizations and the code that they use to produ produce those visualizations. And so just one example here is from uh, Nicola Rennie, which I need to look this up. Um, she may or may not be speaking <laughs> at the conference. Um, she's very prolific in Tidy Tuesday and every week posts something um, interesting. And uh, we have a number of people who post every single week. Um, and it's just, it's a, a way to, explore something new. Uh, the data sets are kind of all over the place. Um, at this point, we will have released uh, this week's data set, which is all about the package, the R package, Shiny, and um, packages that depend on Shiny and packages that depend on those packages. So it's more of a kind of network graph data set. And we try to vary it so that uh, like the week before that was all about um, solar eclipse data by location. And so it was times and places um, but we'll have other data that's just purely tabular data, um, like data frame, normal data frames. And we try to give people just different data sets because if you're working with the same, you know, empty cars or uh, Iris or uh, Titanic data sets or, or even Palmer penguins, if you're working with the same data sets over and over, you're not going to really learn how to work with real world data. And so we want to give people different data sets to keep practicing uh, different techniques. And so across all those things, and I need to be careful because I'm going to run out of time, but uh, I do use Shiny. So, I, you know, to bring things back to what this conference is all about, that 
I use Shiny to coordinate all these things. And we all, sorry, we use Shiny to coordinate these things. Um, Shiny is really great for community management tasks like this. Um, I developed a package uh, for all of the Shiny apps that we developed that um, you can log into them using your data, data science learning community Slack account. I created this package, Shiny Slack. I, I did a lightning talk about it at our studio account 2022. And um, using that, or as part of that, I have uh, two main apps that I want to show a little bit about. Uh, Book Clubber is the app for um, finding times to coordinate the book clubs. Um, I just want to, I do want to say it's a little ugly and I would welcome some help with that side of it, but it is functional. Um, users can come in, choose the book that they're going to use, it automatically detects your time zone once you log in, um, but you can update that if like your computer's time zone isn't really the time zone you want to think in. You can select different books and then it'll show you um, times that other people have chosen and you can choose the times that work for you. And this is how we find a time that will work for as many people as possible uh, for the book clubs. Um, and the, you know, the darker that the cells are shaded, the uh, more people have already signed up for that time. Um, the other, the next one is uh, Mentor Dash. This was actually the first Shiny app that I built for the community, or uh, I can't remember if I started this one or if someone else did, because I know the look of it, this one looks so much better uh, because someone else <laughs> did the work to make this one look pretty. Uh, I, I believe Tan Ho, did most of the visuals on this one, um, but this one has had uh, a lot of collaboration over the years. And this is our unanswered question tracker. So within those help channels, we wanna try to make sure that every question uh, is dealt with. And so these are the questions that have not, uh, either have not had any replies or the original asker has come back and given more information. And so they're waiting for someone to follow up. Uh, we try to keep that number down to zero and it's a little high, at least it was as of when I took this screenshot and probably uh, at some point since taking the screenshot, I will have talked to our mentors and uh, pointed out, hey, let's uh, let's get in there and bring it down. Um, this, so yeah, this dashboard, it actually is loading live data from our Slack. And uh, as you uh, work with it, you can you know refresh the data and it'll get the new questions, um, can sort and find questions that maybe are more appropriate to the kind of, either the kind of things you know, or the kind of things you want to learn about. Um, this is open to anybody who has an account on our system. And the idea is that, you know, we want people to be able to find questions. Um, and those are the two main ones that I have, but I would love you, or I intend to build more. Um, Shiny is a great tool for this kind of thing. And I have a whole slide about that. So let's go ahead and talk about that. That one of the great things about Shiny that I probably don't have to convince a lot of people here about is that it is flexible. It's not just some drag and drop system with just certain set options and you you can't really um, you know, make it work for what you want. You can do pretty much anything you can think of um, as long as, you know, at some it might take more work to get to all the things you can think of, but you can do anything really. Um, it's really quick to get a prototype up. You can have some, you know, something built in a day to that at least shows the idea of what you want to do. And that's you know, obviously really fantastic. Um, and then especially now that it's uh, like a bilingual system that the community can contribute um, as people are learning. And you know, we do have these multiple shiny book clubs that they can come back and contribute to what uh, we're working on. The Mentor Dash app has had a lot of rounds of col uh, collaboration. Um, but also just the, like that book clubber app exists because I posted, hey, I want to make this thing and I've never had time to build it. And someone in the community, uh, Priyanka Gugnija just made it. She made a, a first version. I came in and like took the login system from Mentor Dash and applied it. And together we iterated on it and just made this app. And so it's a great way to kind of practice your skills, um, which actually I realized I have a whole thing about. Cause I do want to talk about how can you uh, collaborate or how can you help? Um, you can volunteer with us. So the, the kind of 
easiest level of how you can help is come in and answer questions on our Slack. Um, try to keep replies in threads so that the Mentor Dash app can keep track of them. But other than that, just anyone can come in and answer questions. Uh, you can facilitate a book club. So every book club that we host has someone who is just in charge so that I know who I need to talk to. Uh, and so volunteer to do that. The one caveat on that is you have to participate in the club first because we want you to know what you're getting into. Um, but we can always uh, use more facilitators. And just to be clear, the facilitators are also learning. They're reading the same book everyone else is. They're a member of the, of the club. Uh, they're just the person who has said, okay, yeah, I'll be in charge. Um, an advantage of that is the time is chosen based on what you, when you say you're available because you're running that cohort. And so you don't have to worry about um, it being a time that doesn't work for you. And then, uh, you know, the clearest way that people at this conference can, can volunteer is you can contribute to the shiny apps. Um, I am trying really hard to make the GitHub repos welcoming and to make kind of like let go of some things and let people help. And so I invite you to convince me to let you contribute. Um, like I said, that book club ex only exists because someone made it, like I mentioned it and she made it. Uh, we also have some automatic processing for book clubs for the YouTube uploads. And that happened because another member of the community, uh, Kevin Kent just came in and said, okay, yeah, I'll do that. And uh, got, uh, the YouTube API sorted out enough to help me to where we could get to the point where that, that would work. So that would be great. I'm going to burn through the donation stuff because um, people here kind of heard the whole spiel as that was happening. Uh, but that's uh, a whole thing that you can help with. And then you can spread the word. So DSLC is brand new. Our name is not known. Um, I've heard a number of people in the last couple of weeks say, uh, you know, that thing that used to be R4DS, whatever it's called now. Um, and so I really want, you know, mention over and over dslc.io, mention those in your, in your social media posts, because, uh, that is our name now. And I want people to be able to find us. Um, even if, uh, we aren't active on a particular, particular social media platform, please do send people our way. I guess, especially if we're not active, we aren't very active on Twitter anymore. And so if um, other people, or I guess X, uh, since the big exit, we haven't really uh, been there, but if you want to get people there, that would, that would be great. Um, and another, another way that you can bring people in that we've had a couple of places that have done this is get colleagues at work to come join a book club with you. Um, Learning how to how to do your yeah do your job counts as part of your job most of the time, and so if there is something that would help get a, a group of you in, and you can probably set the time and the day if you get enough of you in to join, and so um, that's a good way to get people kind of involved in the community. But overall, uh, I would love for everyone here who isn't already involved to join the community. Uh, you can find us at dslc.io. Uh, that's been there at that bottom bottom right on all the slides. Um, and you know, there, there's a link to join the Slack. Um, and there's also all kinds of other information about us. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn at John the Geek or on Mastodon at John the Geek. Um, and sometimes other social media at John the Geek. And you can find us currently, we're still at R4DS community on Mastodon um, and also on LinkedIn. Um, and I might have to change that slide in the next few days because I might also make us a separate DSLC account. And if I do, then I will update that. Uh, and that is it. I am five minutes over. And so I need to fix that because uh, I technically have a half hour because 10 minutes of questions, um, but I can't go over because I'm running the track and that would be a very bad precedent. All right, so does anyone have questions? I know this is different for this group, but... Uh, I'd love to hear uh, questions or comments in this track. It's okay to have more of a comment than a question, uh, unlike a usual conference. <laughs> Any thoughts? Yeah, but my question would be related mm. to why did you change the name? <laughs> but you know, you already mentioned a bit. Uh, yeah. 
why did you change the logo, the colors, and everything? So basically, you re revolutionized everything. Yeah. yeah. That, that is great, uh, right. somehow, because it's, you know, it gives a, um, a new look uh, and tell the audience, so the, the people that something changed, basically. Yeah, uh, so I, I think I probably, I'll, I'll need to find time and place to put more in that we've never been any at all associated with the book. Like, yes, Hadley uh, had a strong influence on our existence, but we, you know, we're not part of Posit. We're not associated with the book. And I actually, our logo always bothered me a little because it's directly lifted from the book. Like it's the bird that's on the cover of the book. And that's not us. That's not our brand. That's his brand. And it, I think it causes confusion. And it actually, I know it causes confusion. We had um, a grant that we applied for that they said, well, um, you know, we don't give grants for just one book. And we're like, we're not, we don't have anything to do with that book. Um, and so um, it's just, it's, we really wanted to make it clear that we are not that book. We are, we are more than that book. This has actually been in the works for uh, years, technically. Um, and it got delayed. Um, we were about to like, I was a day or two away from the rename when we lost fiscal sponsorship and had to concentrate on other, other things for a few weeks there. And so that threw everything off a little bit. But um, yeah, it's just, uh, it, we wanted to make it clear that we are not that book. Now, you know, there is some influence from the fact that we're multilingual. We're not just R, but we are mostly are and so it wasn't that wasn't a super important part of the rename but the the fact that um you know we're not we're definitely not just that one book and people think that we are um the number of times that I, i'll talk to someone who i've known in the art community for years and they'll be like oh yeah i've never joined because um you know i don't really work in or i i, I haven't uh, read that book in years and I mostly work in modeling. So I don't, I didn't think the community made sense for me. And I'm like, Oh yeah, we have like 10 book clubs about modeling. They're like, what? <laughs> I had no idea. So um, yeah, that's why. Any other comments, questions? That's a good point. I think I need to probably shorten the history a little bit to get more room for the why. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I will uh, find the controls and stop sharing. Um, there we go. And hand it over to Federica. Yeah, share my screen. Can you hear me fine? Can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having me today talking about learning together with uh, Shiny Book Club. My name is Federica Gazzelloni and uh, I am an independent researcher, statistician and naturally always open to new insights about data modeling and visualizations I also enjoy finding hidden patterns while expanding my knowledge. I am currently writing a book with it. It's, it's titled Health Metrics and the Spread of Infectious Diseases, Machine Learning Application and Special Modeling Analysis, which will be released at the end of the, the, this year, more, most probably uh, Christmas time. Uh, I'm also a little, you know, passionate about animals, and uh, so I've made a little package uh, named Oregon Frogs, which talks about classification. So, did um, you know that the demand for data scientists 
has increased by 650 percent since 2012. So this is a according to LinkedIn 2017 US emerging job reports. Yes, these things it's like a bit of uh, uh, confusing somehow because mastering the tools of the trade like Chinese still remains a challenge for many. But at the same time, using the words of Hadley Wiggum, which is the author of Mastering Shiny book, Shiny is designed to feel almost magically easy when you are getting started. And yet, the deeper you get into how it works, the more you realize it's built out of general building blocks that have strong software engineering principles behind them. So we are good to go. How to keep going learning and practicing. So today I want to uh, share with you how Data Shine's book clubs can be a powerful tool for learning how to make shiny apps and ultimately how to they contribute to our collective growth and understanding in this field. Uh, Data Science Learning Community .io, book clubs, thanks to John Harmon and all in the community. Let me learn a lot and also make new friends. So what I keep kept doing for learning more and learning how to shiny, to make shiny apps, is following book clubs, such as Book Club Mastery Shiny or Book Club uh, APGS, which we will see later, and Book Club Shiny UI. So imagine for a moment that book clubs have the potential to save the world. It might sound like an exaggeration, but in the context of learning, they provide a um, neural uh, environment, okay, space where we can explore complex topics like shiny app development without fear of judgment. So they, they become a beacon of collaboration, learning, and everything. So uh, these are two of the book which I've uh, followed within the, the book clubs. And this bo book clubs, um, one, one important aspect of these book clubs that we have the opportunity to practice what we learn. So we can engage in discussions about the topic, share our thoughts and opinions, and even projects, um, our uh, material. So it's an environment that allowed us to step out of our, the complexity of our everyday life and delve into the uh, thought process behind the shiny app creation. So I've come to realize that um, the, they offer an invaluable benefit of such a uh, collaborative learning environment not just a platform, okay? What's remarkable is that a book clubs uh, encourage us to see the learning path outside of a black and white uh, box, box. We understand that people are multifaceted and by engaging with their perspective, we gain deeper understanding of the subject matter. So, metaphorical language plays a significant role in, in this discussion. It's not just about what we learn, but also how we learn it. So the, law, the role, for example, of the administrators in facilitating these discussions cannot be understated. So they elevate the conversation, take things to the next level. So when we read together, we feel a sense of autonomy and have the opportunity to talk about what we have read and Find, try to find a solution if we can solve problems together. So it's about understanding the dynamic of learning and picking up a book that we might not be able to tackle alone.
And so now let, let me give you a glimpse into some of the practical insights that I gained from, from this book club. So I, I found myself um, with, with some challenges, okay, designing a shiny UI. For example, uh, setting up uh, features on a app. And, and so, however, through the collective expertise of the group, because, you know, you are not only you can find yourself with people which is might be an expert and want to learn a bit more of those little things that they might don't know. So you, you might be able to to find out while reading the book. So whatever, I was able to overcome these others. And um, just to give you a, a little sense of what, 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 I, what I mean, this is a, a simple app. And so this is a, a UI, the first block, okay? Uh, the, the first structure of, of, of an app. And this is the server, which is the, the engine. This app here, it, it's a very, very simple app, which lets us to um, customize. Um, so we have the UI, we have the server, which is the engine, and then we have the app. So th this app here, for example, if you change the, uh, on the slider and then click on the button reset as a, a reactive uh, element. So you learn this reading the book. So you might want to find the things uh, on the internet, but while you're reading, you find other things. Those, those little things that you have never thought. So, and then you might, find a way to change a background color of a button. Many things that you can do. So um, together, finally, uh, the Data Shine School Club offer us the opportunity to see the very best in people. We come together not just to learn, but to grow as individuals, as a community. So let's embrace the power of book clubs and continue our journey of discovery together. So we can achieve mastering innovation and impact. Thank you for joining me on this journey in the ever evolving landscape of data science. And remember, keep learning, keep growing, keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And thank you. Thank you to John Armon and all data shine learning community, former R4DS. <laughs> Thank you. I have a I had the problem with the app, so uh, no problem. I <laughs> I didn't think to uh like say something right at the beginning to give us a time point. Do you know exactly the time when you started? Um, because you know that's my big thing is well, just because I'm going to be running it, I'm very conscious of time, <laughs> making sure everyone is going to fit into the schedule. I think you were pretty close, though. So, nope, you are muted. I'm muted. <laughs> About 10 minutes. 10 okay. Minutes. Uh, yeah, you might want to tighten it up a little bit just so that there's a little bit of room for Q&A. Um, but very, you know, uh, it looked very good and there's a lot to cover, so it's hard to fit in. I know that you didn't submit it as a lightning talk, but I wanted to fit in as many as we could. I don't know if I had to mention other things or show the people that were in the book club, show the the, 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 the videos that we post on yeah. the YouTube. I don't know. I think, um, I, I think kind of that your aim of just your personal experience is really good, like. Um, and people can learn more from the website and they can learn more on the Slack and they'll learn a little bit about them from my talk. So I think it's good. Um, and talking about like what you get out of them, I think that's going to be good. So she did think but, that yeah. my, the, the, the very first part when I talk about me, so should I like do it short and just mention very briefly? Yeah. Like yeah. I think try to condense that a little bit probably. Um, what I say. Yeah, that lightning talks like 
lightning talks are hard. It's uh, because you don't like you're giving an ad for something more than the actual thing. Like tell people enough that they'll want to go learn more. So make sure, you know, make sure to point them to the website. Um, Cause you can't tell them everything there is to know about, about the topic because you only have five minutes or five to 10 minutes. Um, so, yeah, but it's, I think you're, you know, like if you gave exactly that, that's fine. And then there are ways that you can improve it, <laughs> but like leaving it, um, leaving it where it is, like, even if you just walked in on Thursday and did the same thing close enough, <laughs> um, but you know, there are little refinements you can make to tighten it up a little bit. I think, uh, cut out or, or just keep it focused on, uh, your, like what you got out of the clubs and then how they can learn more. I think, um, anyone else have any thoughts? Okay. Also, the, oh, the, the band the, where, where your the logo for uh yeah so I put that black band on the on the black background which I'm not very happy um uh, with it so I've tried without background but then uh so it's it's not very very good so it doesn't stand out. Uh, very well on the green. Uh, okay, so you need a like a version with a solid background. Is that the? Yeah, yeah, that possibly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll make sure that you have. Uh, I I don't remember if I sent you anything or not, but yeah, I'll make sure that you you have a nice. Um... Okay, and then what's about the app? So because that that thing is very very useful. So you can even um work on it like load new files uh and everything on that that thing there the shiny so life my but opinion for a talk is always screenshots live demos just they fail they find a way to fail so the you know showing screenshots of it as many like as much as you can that'd be great showing showing pieces um i think that is good because it shows kind of what you have actually applied from the club um but i would do so via targeted screenshots of things that you have done versus trying to do a live the slide, Sorry, what? you can then you you cannot use the the reactivity click the button yeah yeah i mean yeah yeah if there is like well in that case then i would record a video and put it on the slide but just doing the actual, like people aren't going to be clicking buttons on your talk. And this is my opinion. Other people have different thoughts, but I, I think handing it as much as possible um, because you have a very short time. If your internet's bad that day or what, or yeah. not, you know, even if it's a local thing, if something weird happens with your, your laptop, who knows you want to limit, uh, also want to you know limit share. randomness as much as possible so yeah i want to show you this i don't know if you can yeah. see it yeah you see yep. the color this is wasn't was all black because i was yeah. keeping play with these things and now it's white it's okay. all white you cannot see the, the the code and i you know knocked my head down <laughs> I, I, I cannot put it back again i don't know what that if I did something or I don't know, whatever. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. The, the potential for conflict uh, between different pieces of code is high there. I know it, like it's, it's really tempting to use all the features and to embed it. And if you can get it working smoothly, then cool. But uh, screenshots or videos are safer, especially when you've got such a short time. Um, Getting again, you're only going to get the idea across. You're not going to be able to have time to like really go through every aspect of it. Um, and I like I'm a little anxious because we have the um a lot of these like app demos, and I know everyone is going to run over their time, and we'll see how it goes. Or there will be lots of people that have connection issues or different, you know, 
they post their apps uh, for everyone to go click the link and everyone loads it and therefore it crashes. There will probably be a lot of those. Um, but dem demonstrating it yourself, if you can get it solid, then sure, you know, like at that point you can include it, but just be aware. I don't think that's the most important thing. I think showing the idea of the app is more important than showing the working app. Um, because, I mean, it's a whole Shiny conference. People have seen Shiny, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> the idea of Shiny doesn't necessarily have to be shown, but I think talking about um, learning about some of the, you know, applying CSS or the different levels of things that you learn via the book clubs be what I think would be really relevant here. Uh, and like I said, my opinion, I know other people have different thoughts. People like to do live coding. I don't think live coding is good for talks. I think it's good for conversations and, and like meetings, but I don't, and maybe even teaching, but I don't think it's as good for a conference talk because so often it just results in people typing little tiny things that people can't see. And uh, that's not, not that way you're doing it that that's what you're doing, but it's in that same basket that I think people uh, go down the wrong path sometimes. Anyway, uh, in any case, I think it's going to be great. <laughs> like whether if you give exactly that talk, that would be great. If you make some improvements, that would be great. Um, and I look forward to seeing everything on Thursday and Friday. And um, like I said, Wednesday, there's, there's the day of workshops um Thursday and Friday talks there are some big uh cool talks that are opposite of my track and that's sad because I'm going to miss those talks and I'm probably going to miss a lot of people um, <laughs> but hopefully we'll get people back for at least part of the day uh we have uh Tracy Teal as midday sometime I can't remember exactly what time of the day um but she is uh, uh, talking about kind of like um, the aspects of running an open source project beyond just the code itself. Um, oh, and good to know that, Trevin. I definitely need to look that up before I talk because uh, I can't remember whether she was speaking or not. I I think she might have just had too much of a load and didn't. I I didn't see her submit anything, but. She might have submitted in a different ta talk um, or a different track right there. But yeah, um, she, uh, uh, sorry. So yeah, Tracy is going to be talking about kind of like um, managing projects um, and, and like how to deal with open source communities from, um, you know, as a, a kind of a larger scale, looking at the stuff beyond the code. Um, it's based on the workshop that she did last year at PosiConf and her experience, like um, starting uh, data carpentry and that like she ran the carpentries and she's worked at various open source places, worked at Posit. Now she's at a company that, whose name I need to learn before Thursday so that I can introduce her. Um, but it should be a great talk. And I look forward to that and I look forward to everything. It's going to be good. <laughs> We have a talk about um, like accessibility in Shiny apps. And uh, I intentionally put that one towards the end of the day so that everyone wouldn't be noticing all the flaws in everyone's uh, apps before that talk, because I assume that most of us are probably pretty bad at that. And so I look forward to learning a little bit about how to make things better. Um, and there's just a whole lot of things. Uh, I know Joe Chang and Winston Chang from Posit are both talking about uh, cool new things in Shiny. Um, can't remember if Joe's talk is against my track, but I really want to see it. So I hope it's on Friday. Um, and yeah, I look forward to seeing everybody there. That, that ended up timing out pretty well. So see everyone on Slack. <laughs>